Welcome to week three of the Machine Quilting Blog Hub. It's a book by Krista Watson and Angela Walters. This week there was a focus on continuous curves as well as working on some stippling and doing half of um, a motif in the beginning of the block. And for a long armor you'll have to roll the quilt up and then mirror the second half of the block to the first. So you can do that with um, continuous line curving, curved uh, motifs that look like poinsettias, or you could do geometric types of straight lines, zigzags, things that would um, mirror the second half of the block. The chapter is called Directionally Challenged, and they had very large triangle pieces. Um, now Krista had the advantage on a domestic machine to be able to do the whole um, triangle, the whole large size piece in one um, pass because you can move and manipulate and turn the quilt. But in a long arm you have to learn to quilt in all directions and that's where the challenge was for me this week. Um, I don't have a lot of practice with some of these continuous curves and I will show a few examples of what I did for practice and what worked and what didn't work as well as some other um, continuous line um, curves like orange peels and robbing Peter to pay Paul type of quilting. Uh, so the tip is practice, practice, practice. Overall, um, you know, I'm not real happy with the quilt that's behind me. I'm showing the back because the back is okay to look at, but when I flip it over, um, the thread color was not good and it just magnifies all of the mistakes that I made. And when I went to do the continuous curve um, in the triangle part, I didn't overlap it and I didn't like the shape of the leaf that was left. And then I tried to fix it by adding even more stitches to it, which only made <laughs> situation worse. Hey, it was a practice piece. I had nothing invested in it except a block I made over a year ago and it didn't turn out the greatest when I made the block and some scrap fabric and I have a closet of scrap pieces of batting. You know, what? I'm going to bind it so the back is is the top of the quilt and use it a table runner or some other type of tool for teaching or something. It's okay. It's not a waste of time. It was not a waste of money. I learned a whole lot in this whole process and a lot of people would hashtag epic fail. It wasn't an epic fail. It just didn't turn out the way my mind's eye thought it would turn out. The center with the stippling you can see behind my head turned out pretty good. It's the continuous curves in the corner. So I learned several tips. Number one, it might help to put some registration lines to help keep your spacing even or even dots on the triangle part. So maybe drawing it all out at first until you get the feel of it. The second thing is definitely I'll show you the bet difference between contrasting thread and blending thread. I think blending thread works better for me in most parts and I get self-conscious sometimes with these solid fabrics with bold color thread choices on it. I did that intentionally this week to try to have a thread that would show up in video better and you know, I didn't like how it looked in real life. Um, the other thing I learned is that nothing is a waste of time. It's okay to go very slow. Sometimes I get in a hurry and that may be what part of it was. And the last tip is I quilted this when I was not feeling well, trying to force something to happen when I was sick and I should not have because when I try new things, when I'm not at my best, sometimes you don't get your best. So overall, directionally challenged, you have to learn how to quilt in all directions. You have to learn how to mirror the second half of a block from the first. And um, that's the really ch big challenge for the long armors in this week. Now, uh, other beautiful stitches that are listed are wavy lines and um, echoing other shapes, which I did do that in this block. And I will have a couple of examples and videos that follow up. So thanks for joining us. Um, I hope you're quilting along and I hope you take a lot of time to continue. Okay, from a distance, I like the back of this practice quilt. 
because the gray blends in with the orange and the lighter colors but it has just enough contrast now i learned a lot of in this in the front side is rather embarrassing but i may show one corner to show you why you don't pick things the way you do so continuous curve let's look at this corner what i did was you can tell down here i started by outlining a star that's on the other side you can't see and i did lines now what I learned is you should mark where you want to stop with a Frixion pen instead of eyeballing it so you don't get those came across and I used a ruler for this and then my thread um, I traveled you can see all it's ugly way outside the edge of the quilt and then I came and I did the same thing now remember I told you oh that's dreadful but when I finally got the whole thing quilted, I ended here. So my continuous curve was I did an orange peel in this corner, and I did it twice. And then because I didn't like the gap, I did a little tiny ribbon candy through here. Then I picked up and I started here, and I did a continuous and I started here and did this little teardrop loop and I came back and I echoed it I followed a line here and I came down and echoed it now here is an attempt in this part to do half of this large triangle space where I came down and then I looped actually I always do mine backwards because I do better when I'm sewing and then I did this. Now, I don't like the cannabis look on that. If you want it to look like a poinsettia, overlap and make them look lacy. And such a, there was such open space, I decided to try to add more stitches. Oh, man. So here's some uh, pebbling and then more ribbon candy. But what's in the center here is stippling, and I'm... I, pretty happy with how this looks I started it here and you just don't overlap and make it crinkly and make it feel like brain coral and go round and around sometimes people can work it back and forth in a circle I'm on a long arm so I tend to make it a serpentine fill you know in a serpentine travel line I stopped and then I picked it up here and did the second half so let you look at the rest of this practice piece. So this is why you don't necessarily pick high contrast thread because every little bobble and weave shows. I have a mistake here, but it's blended in, so it's not so bad. Now you know why my quilt will live its life face down. sneak out and then I'm going to park it right here so I want to gently hop there we go now I'm going to do a large floral shape um, petal I'm going to do three of them in half of this triangle and then when we roll it up I'll do the other three on this side I kind of like that shape kind of reminds me of Lord of the Rings the fairies and elves. I don't have fairies in that movie. What am I thinking? Okay, here we go. I just wanted to show you a practice piece that I did. This is reality. You're not going to really see a lot of thread I'm going to show you where the texture lies hmm, you can't really tell but when I come on 
face, you can see texture, but not every mistake and wobble I made. Here is my poinsettia motif in here. And then I did a few other robbing Peter to pay Paul right here, arcing around in that continuous curve. So practicing on swatches is not something I normally do, but it helped because I just felt bad after the devastating loss. Now down here, I decided just to do texture and it's just wiggly close lines. So anyway, practice swatches do have their place. I'm going to turn the light on. You really can't see. The thread blends in. And honestly, most people like the quilting to be in the background. Probably make this into a placemat. Or two. Everybody practice on. In this segment of the star, I'm going to do a continuous curve line. I'm going to go from this point to this point, this point to this point, and I'm going to continue that all the way around half of the star, and then I'm going to go around the bases of each triangle before I wiggle the wiggly um, flower-like shape, and then I'm going to sneak out. Then I can roll the quilt and work on the middle and the rest. Here we go. One thing we have to be aware of is that we're going to get some variations and when we are doing these continuous curve lines free motion we are not going to always achieve perfection these take a lot of practice and if you use a contrasting thread that shows up really well on your dark point you're also going to see that yeah this isn't great needs more practice this is a practice piece um, if we want to make it more consistent we may want to use a ruler but today this is for free motion practice and when you step back and look at this over um, the distance of a room it will be okay keep practicing everyone